Welcome back to Citizens Forum. This is the last segment. I'm Will Smith, and today our guest is Jennifer Sager. We're going to be talking about quantum hypnosis healing technique again, as we did with my guest, Garnet Schulhauser. And in fact, Jennifer has been training with Garnet to become a QHHT practitioner herself. And yesterday, I was her very first client. So I got to do another uh, regression to a past life. And Jennifer was very good at bringing me down and taking me under and getting me to uh, examine another past life. So welcome to the show, Jennifer. And thank you. How thank did you, you get started in this? Because it's just such, it seems like such a synchronistic thing that uh, you and I both found this guy right here on the I island. I know, I know. Um, and that, but I, I guess I have been interested in for quite a while and I had heard about Dolores Cannon and those people right. who, who have looked into maybe even hypnosis, not only just quantum hypnosis, but hypnosis. She's been, she was a hypnosis, uh, a well-known hypnotist for 40, for at least 40 years in the States. And uh, she died, I think, a few years ago. And her daughter has taken over her, the, the sort of the business. And that's, uh, that's it was through their um, site and th that I did my training actually. Oh, okay. uh, I did the online training and you can do the live training but uh, anyway I started reading some of her, listening to her on YouTube and becoming fascinated along with some other people who talk a lot about um, sort of past life regression and those types of things that I've been interested in for a long time. So she has yeah. a, a pretty good YouTube channel. I think I've oh, watched yeah. some of the oh, yeah. videos yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah. You can see tons of YouTube videos of her speaking about her all, all her experience uh, regressing people and how she kind of fell into the whole quantum idea of it uh, just by doing regular hypnosis and suddenly people popping into past lives or whatever you want to call them alternate you know yeah sort of, alternate reality yeah, yeah, or something some kind yeah. Of, yeah and it's it's interesting that I mean I was pretty skeptical at first when I, my my uh, mind was saying this is nonsense, this is yeah. crazy stuff when I was doing the first one. But yesterday, uh, I think since I had already done one and sort of verified what I saw, my mind was much more open to listening to this and, and having it be real or at least okay to listen to. So right, is, that, is right. that the same type of experience that you've had? It's kind of a gradual opening? Or? Um, I don't know. Actually, I've been kind of into a lot of weird stuff for quite a while. I've been looking into all these all these kinds of things. I mean, the idea of past lives has fascinated me for probably in my own like 40 years. Like I've oh, been really? looking okay. into, so yeah. You're yeah, an old I, hand at the well, ideas I, of I it just, anyway. Yeah, the ideas I think I've been always, uh, for a long time, been looking into and reading various people who've done, you know, who've talked about even like out-of-body experiences or, you know, um, near-death experiences or, you know, all this kind of stuff, even alien abductions. It all right. kind of starts to, you know, at a certain point, if you look into it long enough, it kind of starts to blend a bit and you find out there's a lot of commonality. Yeah, I've got the, I have the same impression. I, mm -hmm. when I started, I mean, one of the things that I just couldn't stand to read about, for example, was UFO abductions. I was just, it just gave me the creeps. Right. And I, right. and I found that the, the people who talked about that had some kind of religious fervor that, that was slightly mm -hmm. daunting to me. And so mm -hmm. that was a, that was a threshold that I had to get over. But then all of a sudden, I, I don't know what, what it was, but I realized this is the same kind of thing that's happening. This is, people waking up to the fact that they're not just a material body, but that there's a lot more to it than that. And I think Jacques Vallée said something that the UFO uh, phenomenon is primarily a consciousness. It has to do with consciousness rather than, you know, strange <laughs> beings exactly, riding around. Exactly, so, exactly. So, yeah, so how exactly. Did, so do you, did what kind of put you over the over the threshold to really want to do it and to, to participate. I'm curious about that. Oh, as, as a practitioner? You right, mean yeah. do why this? Why would you, why not just examine your own life and be happy with that, but why would you help, want to help other people? I'm curious. Well, I retired about a year ago. Ah, okay. <laughs> and um, I was an English teacher, an English, uh, second as a, se English as a second language teacher for a lot, uh, most of my career. And, um, and that I, while I was doing that, I really enjoyed it. I could see the, you know, the obvious need for it, but a part of me was always feeling like, this is not really what I want to teach. I mean, 
I know mm -hmm. other people can teach this and I can teach this, but I think I would like to teach something that's a little bit closer to my own, to my heart, to my, 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 just my, my search for, for, you know, what this is all about. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, uh, you know, as I said, English is great, but, um, but I've been really kind of wanting for a long time to serve a, a slightly, I don't know if I'd say higher purpose, but a purpose that would be more in line with what, how I look at life. Oh, that's mm. interesting. Yeah. So would you say that you are in general seeing some kind of uh, awakening in, in humanity also like I am, that, you know, that people are waking up to things? I am. I really am. Now, I, I got to say that, you know, um, and most of us probably like uh, look at a lot of information that really reflects back a lot of what we want to see or what we believe. And yes. so I have to admit that a lot of what I look at is very positive. It's very, it's stuff that's telling me that we are on the brink of an enormous transformation and that it's all happening and it may look like chaos and it is difficult and it is kind of crazy, but we're, we're getting through this and, and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And, um, and so I, that's, my, that's my perception and that's, that's what I, I like to hear and I guess that's kind of where I, yeah, that's kind of what I like to, the, my, my world, that's the world I like to live in is looking at all the, all the things that are happening that, you know, and there are a lot of things that are happening that are showing that we're, we're, we're changing, we're progressing, we're opening up, we're, you know, the, there's a groundswell of, of, of change around the world as far as I can tell. I, I notice that even with my, whether I look at the world in general, I, I look at my own friends, that there does seem to be something going on that we're not talking about perhaps as much as we could. And mm -hmm. in fact, working on this show, one of the things that's happened to me is I, I think when I originally started working on the show, I was thinking, yeah, we've got to fix all this stuff. And after five years of looking at it, I, I just kind of got the idea that, you know, maybe that isn't really the point. Maybe we can't really fix the, the external world, but maybe we can fix ourselves and, and see the world in a different mm -hmm. way. And the more I've been looking at that, the more I, I kind of think that that that's what it's all about, that we can use these horrible things that are going on in the world, and instead of just thinking them as being mm -hmm. evil or horrible, we can say, well, this is forcing me to look at myself and the way I deal with humanity and how much am I a part of this, because the, the quantum uh, reality that we're all getting used to says, I'm a part of this, so if I'm, if I'm always looking at the bad things, then I'm actually co-creating the bad things. Would you say that that's... Yeah, like that. well, I mean, um, we have to look yeah. at the bad things. We have to know yes. what's going on. Yes. But at yes. the same it's, time, yeah. we really have to imagine a new future. Uh, we had the, the guest, for example, who's talking about switching over to uh, different types of cars, and, and it is happening. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. you're you're of that same type of. Yeah, totally. And I think that that's a very um, uh, powerful position in a sense, and it takes us out of that victim mentality which we have been in. You know, and unfortunately, there's a lot of people that still think that everything exterior to us is what's happening to us and that we are victims of the external environment. Right. And, and that's like, well, you know, that, that's pretty, that's rough. That's, you know, you don't have a lot of hope. You don't have a lot of power in that position. So I like to think, you know, then that, that we are a lot more powerful than that and that we do sit in a place where we have a, we are a divine spark. And we're we we and in fact some you might say that we we are all and so I mean to even right. go that far is to say we are the world we are everything and it's all within us so yes change does come from within you so know how does, that, how in does my this, view how does this quantum hypnosis technique how does that get us to how does that change us do you have an idea of how you can explain that to people because I would think. I mean, I see how it's happened to me mm -hmm. having done two sessions, but how do you explain mm -hmm. it to somebody who's just watching the show today or somebody who's vaguely interested? Right. Um, well, what it does is it kind of gives you, so I guess I could just say that what we do is we put you into a, a state where you're very, very relaxed and you're able to connect with things that are not normally um, in your consciousness. Uh, so, for example, it's kind of a little bit like a dream. 
you know, in a way, like when you dream, and we often don't remember our dreams, or if we do, we remember little bits of them, but that's like another part of our, of our interior reality that mm -hmm. can have a lot of meaning for us. So what we're doing when we hypnotize people, and that word is kind of freaks people out a little bit, but we're really just relaxing people and putting them into a state where they connect with that, that other kind of, that other reality that exists that we're not able to really see in our kind of normal 3D beta, you know, mind mi mindset. Right. So we kind of relax people, put them into a different wave length state, and, and then they connect to things that have meaning for them in their life now. So um, if you want to call it a past life, you may, you may suddenly see yourself, and you do feel like it's yourself. It's as if you are in a movie. Let's say, right. it's as if you've been put into a movie, uh, but you're playing a different part. You may be male or female, you may be whatever, and you look different, you, you have a different job or different whatever, and you start, and, and if you let yourself just kind of go with it, as if you are, let's say, playing a part, you say, oh, well, what am I wearing, and where do I live, and what do I eat, and what's going on, and what do I do, and, and, and it's kind of fun. It's just an interesting thing, but then we take it to a place where we go, okay, well, what's happening in this life that's important? And that has more significance to the individual uh, that relates to what's going on in their life now. Right, so. it's, it, it's uh, if a person is, it doesn't necessarily have to believe in a past life, you can just say, mm -hmm. well, this is your subconscious showing you a story exactly. that it wants to tell you about something that's really important exactly. to you right now. Because all of us have these hopes and fears and dreams and worries, and, and we're not able to necessarily hear what our subconscious has to say about mm -hmm. that. So this is a gentle way. Mm -hmm. and, and how does it feel for you, you know, like uh, yesterday when you were talking to me, how does it feel like to, to draw that out of people? Does that feel good to you? Does it It was so fun. It was really, really fun. And it's like, it's amazing. I mean, I, 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 as I said, I don't, haven't done any yet, but I mean, you were very talkative, and I know some people might be a little, a little quieter and a little, little more reticent to speak. In mm -hmm. which case, as a, as the practitioner, you have to kind of keep asking them questions and try to keep them, you know, sort of um, giving you information because that's what you're both trying to do. And you can, if some people can get a little caught up in the action that they're seeing as if they're in a movie and they're actually in the movie and kind of having fun or doing their thing and to kind of remember, try to draw them in and say, okay, well, where, what are you doing now? And remind them to give you the information that you're both wanting to to get, but it was yeah, it was really fun and really it's fascinating stuff. It's like you just have no idea what yeah. somebody's going to come up with. Well, right? yeah, reading Dolores Cannon's books and mm. she tells some of the stories about what people's lives have been and that's how she gets all this. She got all this yeah. information. So. Yeah, and amazing stuff. I mean, um, is when they talk about things where you really see a big connection between, let's say, uh, a, a death in a previous life where someone has drowned or whatever. Right. And then you realize that in this life, there's some issue that they've had, uh, maybe a lung issue or maybe something that is completely related right. to that, it, that, 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 that it, and you think, well, how the heck does that work, right? I mean, and, it, and it, so, it, it, and, and this happened to her many, 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 many times. She had 40 years of wow. thousands and thousands of people that she recorded, and so many instances like that, where people were, in almost instantly, sometimes, I mean, that sounds a bit, you know, kind of robot, a lot, a, a, like a big thing to say, but sometimes instantly sort of um, changed or, you know, healed right, or yeah. something would happen physically that, that they would al al allow them to know, wow, something's really changed here. You know, and it's not maybe always that dramatic, but, right. but there's definitely, there's definitely you know, something. Interesting. Well, mm -hmm. we've, we're out of time. Uh, thank you very much. That was just, uh, I just find this whole, this whole panoply of things going on on the planet right now. I've, I'm, I've gone from worrying about things to wondering what's going to happen next and being kind of excited about it. And this oh, is, this great. is really opening up for me. So thank you very much, Jennifer, for coming on the show. My pleasure. And thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.